I'll never forget those 14 minutes. The other thing I heard was when the ground war actually started, and an F-16 pilot by the name of Billy Andrews, who some of you may have heard or seen or met, because he won the Air Force Cross for his actions that day, was shot down in the middle of the retreating Republican Guard, and I mean right in the middle of them. And the call went out from AWACS. Was there anybody around who had the ordnance and the fuel who could get to where he was located in case we needed him for SARCAP? And a lot of people responded, but the first one that I really paid attention to was the voice of, a, of an Army Chinook helicopter pilot who came on the radio and said, look, I've got this much gas. I'm, here's my location. I can be here in that many minutes. Give me his coordinates. I can pick him up. Now, everybody knew where the Republican Guard was, and everybody knew that he was right in the middle of them. And you've got to remember that a Chinook is about the size of a double-decker London bus with props on it. And it doesn't have guns on it. And I don't know how you feel about women in the military. But I guarantee you I would follow her in the combat. And I'll never forget her voice. Last two things I'm going to mention. This is the highway of death. You guys have seen it, pictures before. Next slide, please, Fred. It's a road leading north out of Basra. It was a retreat route of the Republican Guards, and it got cut off right about where the black smoke went over the Euphrates Rivers Valley. And everywhere from there south, it looked like this. Not a new picture. I'll tell you what's significant about it. I killed people here. Me. This combat is an intensely personal thing, folks. I think I mentioned that. I'd killed people before during this war, but this time I saw them. I saw the vehicles moving before the bombs hit. I saw people getting out and running, and then I aimed at them with CBU and dropped hundreds of bomblets on their head to make sure they wouldn't get away. War is a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. There is nothing good about it. But it is sometimes necessary. And so somebody better be good at it. I am. Trapper Carpenter is. Corky Von Kessel is. I guarantee you General Olstrom is. He didn't get to be a three-star general and do the things he's done by not being good at this business. You better be. Next slide. One more slide, please, Fred. And I won't forget this. Next slide. Before I got back to the U.S., as I was flying in Tom Rackley's squadron on the way to the east coast of the United States, we checked in on the first U.S. air traffic control site that we had talked to the entire route. And Colonel Rackley checked in with something along the lines of a, it was Boston Control. This is Widow Flight, 24 F-16s coming home. And the air traffic controller responded, welcome home, Widow. And then at regular intervals for the next five or ten minutes, every airliner on that frequency checked in and said something. Welcome back. Good job. Great to have you home. God bless you. Whatever. About ten minutes after that, I got my first glimpse of the U.S. coastline. It was the coast of Massachusetts. And I sat in my cockpit, and I sang America the Beautiful to myself. I'll never forget how bad it sounded. <laughs> or how proud I was when it was over. Take a look at this flag, folks. Those white stripes indicate the integrity that you represent here at the Air Force Academy and that you better carry with you into our Air Force. Those stars are the courage of all the people who have gone before you. And they belong to you now. And that red is for Mike Chinberg and for the millions more like him who died serving their country. And in the not-too-distant future, one of you is going to be standing up here talking about your experiences in combat to the classes of 
2015 or 16 or 17, and you're going to be talking about USAFA class of 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2003. This is who you are. And this is what you face in the United States Air Force. If you're not ready for it, let me know, and I'll help you find another career field. You are damn good. You need to get better. All these people I just talked about are counting on it. Slide off, Red. OK. That's what I remember from Desert Storm. No technical marvels, no big precision weapons, just people and feelings and sounds. And I promise you that's what you're going to remember. And your chance is coming sooner than you might like. I guarantee you. OK, questions about this or anything else? Somebody better ask something, because they, planted, they, didn't, they were going to plant some out there, and I said, no, I trust the going more than that. Who's got a question about anything? I'll ask you if you don't ask me. <laughs> oh, there's somebody stretching. He's got a question in the back. <laughs> oh, you're stuck now, bud. Stand up and ask me something. You'll hear me say it over and over again. Any questions, fair, and there are no secrets. So, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you wouldn't be impressed even if I wasn't. <laughs> what else? Who's got a question? Anything at all? OK. Let me ask you a favor then. Colonel Carpenter and I, General Waggy, Colonel Ben, would love the opportunity at any time to come talk to your squadrons. If you've got a meeting, you've got time, you just want to ask questions about anything, or you want to hear about anything that's going on that you, have, that you don't understand, let us know and we'll come visit with you. Need about one day's notice and we'll be there. Okay? The dean might need more because he's busier than I am. But let us know. There are no bad questions. You deserve an answer. And there aren't any secrets around here. Those are the rules. There's one other one. Don't BS me and I won't BS you. Fair? Okay. You guys are dismissed. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>